video is going to be on the gauges, the gauge pods, and the wiring that I have set up for the gauges that I've chosen. Now into the gauge pods, um, this is an auto meter dual gauge pod for the A pillar, and this is an auto meter dual gauge pod for the instrument cluster. So first off, I will be I will not be using this gauge pod anymore. I thought I was, but the reason I'm gonna remove it and run the uh, stock A pillar panel is because I can think of another gauge to put in this uh, pod, an electric gauge that runs off of the data link connector that shows real time uh, parameters that your computer would look at normally, sensors and stuff like that. But I can't think of another gauge to put in this hole, an analog gauge, that would be useful. Like battery, stuff like that, that's, that's useless stuff. Um, battery, oil pressure, all that stuff. Yes, it's a little bit more accurate, but I already have that stuff on the instrument cluster itself. So I'm going to be going away with this and running two gauges, a boost and an AFR. This is the original AFR gauge, AEM, air fuel ratio. This is not the original from my previous videos. This is a Sport Comp 2. that replaced my Sport Comp 1. As you can see, the dial is not is a, is a full dial, but it um, didn't light up on this gauge. And you have the yellow numbers on the, ye on the left, white numbers on the right. It lit up with a yellow backlight, and I just didn't really like it. This one has a white LED backlight, and it's a pretty nice gauge. The pointer lights up it's actually a uh, pretty much an exact match for the Mach 1 gauges now um, the um, air fuel has stayed the same as it was before so um, the way I wired them up is a little bit different than some people do it some people just run them straight to power but um oh gosh I have mine set up. I have mine set up to. Um, this one comes on with ignition. You might also be able to hear the intercooler pump running. Probably not though. The intercooler pump and this are wired into the same circuit under the fuse panel or in the fuse panel. So they come on as soon as I cycle the key. That's what I want. I want those to be that way. That way they're always functioning with the ignition on. This, however, does not come on until I pull this uh, this uh, handle, which is for the illumination of the gauge lights. So there it is. It also it's I'll I'll do a, a no camera light in a second, but I'll go ahead and turn this off. I'll, I'll get to the no camera light in a minute. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the camera light. So you might also be able to see that these gauge pods are painted. Um, these are both painted. They were originally black, like my other auto meter gauge pod. And this is another one that I didn't decide to run, just simply because I didn't like the mounting of it. <clears throat> I painted them with this spray paint. It looks like it has a black top, partially because it is a black top. The paint itself is a dark charcoal, part number right there. This comes from a uh, late model restoration based out of Waco. And it was about, uh, shoot, I can't even remember, $14, I believe. Um, one can was enough to do both pods. So, getting under the ground. Okay. So, right here, we have a little bit of hands in the way. Hang on. Okay, so as you can see, I have two. I'm trying not to yell. I have two ADA circuits. One right here, and another one right here. Go into this doohickey, and I'll get to that in a second. So we have our grounds right here. Grounds. And these are our power wires that go to the uh, fuse number five. One, two, three, four, five. Right here. 
Five is for instrument cluster slash um, instrument cluster slash traction control. That's what I have my wideband set to, or my wideband wired to, as well as my uh, intercooler pump wired to. Um, so those the fuse number five comes on. It's a 15 amp fuse. Comes on as soon as you cycle the key ignition on. <clears throat> the second data circuit is for fuse number 37 which is instrument cluster illumination. It's the illumination, so when you pull the knob um, to turn on the lights, whenever you cycle the knob left or right, it um, dims or brightens the gauges or the instrument cluster lighting, and it does that off a of potentiometer, which increases or decreases the resistance of the circuit, dimming or um, raising the light level. So this is a potentiometer, much like the one in the, in the pull handle. I have a power on the very top and a load in the middle. The bottom isn't, isn't anything that should be a ground, but I went, ahead and put, um, I went ahead and put shrink wrap over it to protect it against it touching anything like a ground or a power, and uh, just to keep that nice and safe. But um, if you do it this way with a uh, two connection, just a power in and a power out to the um, lights. You won't be able to dim the voltage all the way down, but you will be able to cut it about in half. So you'll be able to take a 12 volt circuit and cut it down to about six volts going to the light or the load. So the way this works is you twist the knob. You want to increase the resistance, you twist the knob and it lowers the light level. You want to decrease the resistance, you twist the knob the opposite way, and it increases the light level. <clears throat> so that's called a potentiometer, or a rheostat. You can get them from uh, any of your local um, any of your local radio shacks and stuff like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera light off, and get an inside shot with no lights on of the gauge lighting up and... Um, dimming down. Okay, sorry about the low light. So I will now cycle the key. It goes through the uh, instrument cluster test and the light comes on or the uh, wide band comes on in a cooler pump as well but you can't hear it. <clears throat> I'm now going to pull the knob to turn the instrument cluster lights on. Now if you have a Mach 1 you know what the lights look like on the camera. They look pink. They're not pink. Okay, I didn't put an LED on there to make them pink. They're the normal Mach 1 gauges. And this is the... Now, it doesn't look like it, but these are almost identical in illumination brightness. Um, this gauge right here. So now I am going to... Let me see. Let me see. I am now going to pull it a second. I'm just going to leave it this way. So, I am now going to reach down, it's going to be kind of weird, but I'm going to reach down, I'm going to find the potentiometer, and I'm now going to lower or raise the uh, light level. See it going up? Okay, now back down, spinning the knob like I did underneath. So, like I said, I can only cut it down to about half the voltage, about half the voltage of source voltage. <clears throat> in my case is 6 volts right now, roughly 6 volts. If I were to add the ground that I showed underneath, that ground that didn't actually go anywhere, if I were to run that to a ground, I could lower this down to um, absolute zero. So um, I might do that eventually, if, but like I said, these are almost identical. It doesn't look like it on the camera, but these are almost identical. So, um, another thing that I have the ability to do, since this is in the illumination circuit, I have the ability to, oops, I have the ability to, um, pull the, I have the ability to pull the cord, or pull the uh, knob like I did, but also rotate it left and right when I want to, and lower the instrument cluster lighting, as well as the boost gauge lighting. So, I will now demonstrate. So I will now push that in. <clears throat> Sorry, push that in. Now I will lower all the lighting. Okay, I'm spinning the knob, 
spinning the knob, spinning the knob, and they all go out. Okay, now I will start to increase the voltage to the instrument cluster, and there's all the way again. That is all the way. Okay, and uh, so that's the lights, that's how I set it up. That's the instrument cluster pods. Like I said, I'll be ditching the, this one up here, the pillar pod. I'll be running those two down there. And that's it for this video. Thank you.